Welcome to the weekday report for Wednesday, August 20th. I'm Joe Potente. Here's a brief look at the news. Kenosha County Executive Jim Cruiser is proposing an $18.6 million renovation and expansion of Brookside Care Center. Under the proposal that Cruiser presented to the county board Tuesday night, the county-owned nursing facility would add 48 rehabilitation beds and 24 long-term care beds. Cruiser is proposing to fund the project with bonds paid back by projected increases in revenue. Kenosha Public Schools are still working to fill about 100 open positions for the approaching school year. The school district is listing 85 open certified staff positions and 26 support staff openings. Many of the open jobs are part-time positions or one-year contracts. Unified spokeswoman Tanya Reuter said the number of openings is average for the district and that there are fewer unfilled jobs than this time last year. The Kenosha County District Attorney's Office has added a dangerous weapon enhancer to the murder charge filed against the former West Dallas police officer accused of killing two women and dumping their bodies near Lake Geneva. 52-year-old Stephen Zelich was initially charged here with first-degree intentional homicide for the death of Jenny Gamez. This week, prosecutors added the enhancer for the rope Zelich said he had around the woman's throat when she died. The enhancer could lengthen his prison sentence by five years if convicted. It was cold at Monday's city council meeting, and for once it was not because of the discussion taking place. Alderman Steve Bostrom used the Alderman's Commons portion of the meeting to accept the ALS ice bucket challenge. Bostrom grabbed a water bottle and poured it over his head as his neighboring colleagues tried to get out of the way. Bostrom then challenged Alderman Jan Mahalski and Pat Juliana, as well as Mayor Keith Bosman. Our own Liz Snyder and Brian Sharkey took the challenge alongside Kenosha's Harbor on Tuesday. Here's a look. Hi, I'm Liz Snyder. And I'm Brian Sharkey, and we're here at Kenosha's Lakefront ready to do the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. Yes, the way it works is I have been challenged by my sister Patty in Atlanta. And I've been challenged by head volleyball coach LJ Marks over at Carthage College. And this is to raise money for the ALS Foundation, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease. We get to challenge three people. That's right. We're going to call out John Lostness from the Kenosha News. And Ken Dowdell from the Kenosha News. And finally, we're also challenging all you people watching this either on the weekday report or on channel 14. Or if you read it in my column in Thursday's Kenosha News. All right, let's get wet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cold. Yeah. Two, three. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> we got it the worst. We got it the worst. <laughs> Thanks, Brian and Liz. Consider yourself challenged. Prep soccer's back. Here's Mike Johnson with a rundown. The local boys prep soccer season kicked off on Tuesday with the conference clash at Amici Field, and host Tremper was in strong form with a 6 to nothing shutout of Christian life. In other conference clash matches Tuesday, Wilmot blank St. Joseph 5 to nothing, Indian Trail edge Central 3-2, and Lake Geneva Badger top Bradford 5-1. The conference clash continues Wednesday with matches beginning at 2.30 p.m. Mike Johnson... Kenosha News. What's trending today? The state released numbers today showing that Wisconsin has maintained its number two spot in the nation when it comes to ACT test scores. What do you think accounts for the state's success? Tell us on our Facebook page. Up next is David Marin with a sports take. It's that time of year again. I'm Kenosha News Sports Editor David Marin and this is a sports take. On Thursday, the local high school football season gets underway. Indian Trail, the county's best team a year ago, will christen the campaign with a 7 p.m. non-conference home game against Plymouth at Jaskwich Stadium. Opening week continues Friday with Arrowhead's visit to Bradford, highlighting the local slate, which features five games. Saturday, week one is capped with St. Joseph playing pious at Wisconsin Lutheran College. Follow all the action pre- and post-game on the pages of the Kenosha News or at kenoshanews.com. I'm Kenosha News Sports Editor David Marin, and that's a sports take. Thanks, Dave. Now here's a look at what we're working on today. A public hearing on a Pleasant Prairie rail crossing that's been a magnet for crashes is this afternoon. Deneen Smith will be there. And Melinda Tickelar has the final installment of our Summer Fun for Kids series, a look at a local vacation Bible school. 
Pick up a copy of the Kenosha News and check kenoshanews.com for all the details on these stories and more. I'm Joe Potente with the Weekday Report.